Hey guys, welcome back to The Binger. Disney has been an entertainment powerhouse for the better part of a century. At the heart of every good movie, there's a villain. Some are humans gone rogue, while others are something else entirely. It's enough to make your skin crawl. Join me as I take a look at Disney's most powerful monsters ranked. Animated films can have their powerful monsters too, don't be fooled. Looking at them as an adult, they may not strike the fear of God in you. Watching them when you're three or four years old, that's a different story. I'm not afraid to admit that I have watched many a Disney battle scene from behind a cushion, and that was just last week. Jafar does his best to get his hands on the kingdom and marry Jasmine, but he just ain't cutting it. When push comes to shove, he uses his incredible skill to transform into a giant cobra. How on earth is Aladdin supposed to battle that with a flimsy sword? Luckily for Al, Jafar wishes himself to be a genie, and only then does he get defeated. If he didn't do that, Aladdin would have been on the scrap heap, no doubt about it. Mortal man, insanely powerful wicked sorcerer, yeah, that's not a level playing field. Sure, it's a cartoon, but animators did a good job of making Jafar look threatening as a cobra. Huge spiky teeth and eyes that glow like the fiery pits of hell? That's not a shot for the holiday card. The original Wizard of Oz is an incredible cinematic masterpiece, isn't it? Full of beautiful colors, sweet animals, and of course, the innocent and lovely Dorothy. Judy Garland found fame because of it, and millions of people around the world continue to watch it. However, this movie only told a fraction of L. Frank Baum's story. There are 15 books total, all going deeper into the brilliant and dazzling world of Oz. The 1985 movie Return to Oz was a much darker sequel to the OG. From the very off, the tone is much darker, as Dorothy finds herself locked in a medical facility. It's a little intense, and when she does find her way back to Oz, everything is different. The yellow brick road is crushed to pieces, and all of the inhabitants of the great city are stone. There are a few despicable beings I could mention from this movie, but I'm going to go with the Wheelers. These guys are the stuff of nightmares. Human but with wheels for feet and hands, they zoom around the ruins of Oz doing the bidding of the evil witch Mombi. No child wants to see that. When Hocus Pocus was released back in 1993, critics panned it. Some called it hokey, others called it a waste of the talented cast. For millions of kids across the world, though, it was the best movie ever. Actually, it still is. As the years have gone by, the movie has gained a solid cult following. Seriously, what's not to love about Bette Midler as a centuries-old witch? It's genius. Winifred Sanderson is an impressive villain herself, but she's not a monster as such. Well, she definitely is in the moral sense, but not in the physical sense. She does resurrect one of her old boyfriends from the grave to do her bidding, though. Disney really hit the nail on the head with Billy the Zombie. With a mouth that's sewn up and oozing decomposed flesh, he's every youngster's nightmare. He chases down Max and company through the graveyard, and eventually they knock his head off. He just puts it back on. What he lacks in strength and skill he makes up for in sheer repulsiveness. That's not to be underestimated. In the end, he turns out to be good and he helps the teens defeat the sisters. Still, he's one of the scariest things Disney has put in their movies, so he earns his spot on this list. Have you ever sat down and read some Greek mythology? Those guys knew how to imagine monsters, let me tell you. There's Medusa, the seductively beautiful being with snakes for hair, the Minotaur, half bull, half man, that chases Theseus through the labyrinth, and then there's the Hydra. Really, Disney could draw a lot from these creatures in their movies. In Hercules, Hydra appears to battle our hero. When it eats him, Herc chops its head off from the inside out, proving he really does put the glad in Gladiator. However, it's not game over for the Hydra. Instead, it just pops out a few new heads. It's the thing that just won't quit no matter how hard you hit. Black with sharp white teeth and spiky heads, it's a wonder that Herc made it out at all. Much like his buddy Aladdin, Hercules wins by pure chance. The cliff face collapses and buries the Hydra, doing away with it once and for all. Let that be a lesson to you. If you ever come face to face with one of these things, just make sure you have tons of concrete. When Ariel first stumbles into Ursula's lair, she thinks that the Sea Witch is there to help her. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that that's not the case, but Ariel is young and naive. Ursula gives Ariel her legs, but does everything in her power to make the youngster fail. In the end, she turns into a giant version of herself that is really something to behold. Ursula isn't exactly a small woman anyway, but when she's giant, she's even more formidable. She towers over ships like they're ants to be crushed under one of her tentacles. Prince Eric's quick thinking defeats her as he uses his ship's mass to turn her into sushi. After a few screams and some electric shocks, she falls to the bottom of the sea, becoming shark chow. 
It's a little bit of a shame as Ursula was an awesome villain. She ticked all the boxes, but most importantly, that makeup really sealed the deal. Every Disney villain is only as good as its makeup. Maleficent, the evil queen, the wicked stepmother, clearly none of them skimped on the eyeliner or lipstick. If you're going to be bad, then at least look good doing it. Maleficent isn't to be messed with. Both the original Sleeping Beauty and the live-action remake of it showed that. However, the Angelina Jolie version of the character at least had some redeeming qualities. The OG didn't. She was just plain evil and hell-bent on destroying King Stefan and his entire castle. The Wicked Fairy uses all of her might to turn herself into a dragon to battle Prince Philip. Huge, black, and with a wonderfully long tongue, she's a true sight to behold. Although, if I'm being super picky, there's a wing-to-body-weight ratio going on that doesn't quite ring true. Look at her. Those wings are super tiny compared to the rest of her, and she'd never take off. But when I watched this as a kid, I wasn't focusing on that. I was focusing on how awful it would be to be blasted by her flaming breath. Prince Philip was no match for her until all three of the good fairies helped him out. They enchanted his sword so that he could slay Maleficent in her dragon form for good. Hurrah for teamwork. Okay, so he's not exactly a monster, but he's not human either. In fact, Hades is the Greek god of the underworld. He's sort of like the devil, bent on taking innocent souls down to his level. While the mythology behind the Hercules characters is epic, Disney handled him with kid gloves. The result was a scary-looking dude voiced by James Woods. With flaming blue hair, long skinny fingers, and the ability to damn you to misery for all eternity, Hades is not to be underestimated. I spent a large portion of my childhood being thankful that Herc got one up on this guy. Even though Hades can be funny at times, with a dark sense of humor, he's really downright despicable. Maybe that's what earns him a place on this list. The ones that can make you laugh are always the ones that scare us the most. They make you feel at ease, and then BAM, you're a rug on their floor. It's a little bit of a rough deal. Ahoy, matey! What's that down there yonder? Okay, that was my best pirate impersonation, and I know it felt disastrously short of the bar. What can I say? I'm no Captain Jack Sparrow. The Kraken first reared its ugly head in Pirates of the Caribbean 2. Gibbs tells Will Turner of a fearsome beast that works on behalf of Davy Jones. Gibbs tells the tale like it might just be an urban legend, but viewers know that's not going to be true. The movie pulls on the real-life legend of this terrifying creature. There have been myths of a giant octopus-like being that's terrorized the seas for centuries, but it's probably not true. I say probably because, let's face it, who knows what's at the bottom of the ocean. Anyway, in the movie, Jack is marked with a black spot, which is basically an open invitation to the Kraken. Although Jack does his best to avoid a confrontation with the beast, he fails and is ultimately pulled down by it. Audiences don't get to see the entire thing on screen, but what we do see is bad enough. Giant fangs, horrible tentacles, it's enough to put a man off his calamari, I tell ya. What's worse than a zombie with a detachable head? These guys, of course. The Black Cauldron really pushed the envelope for Disney. Most of the time, the studio likes to keep things light, but this movie was incredibly dark and spooky. Not only was the main villain, the Horned King, enough to make you quake in your boots, but his minions were even worse. Also known as the Army of the Deceased, they're often picked out as some of the most disturbing Disney beings to ever come to fruition. So what's so bad about them? If you're new to this film, allow me to describe how gross these guys are. They rise up out of the green mist of a cauldron with flesh literally hanging off their bones. They have one goal and one goal alone, to destroy all life. Yeah, it's not fun. In fact, the characters scared test audiences so much that a lot of their scenes were removed from the final cut. You can catch some of these special snippets floating around online if you think you're brave enough to track them down. Rather you than me, I'm telling you. I'd like to sleep tonight. The Queen of Hearts does not suffer fools. Actually, she doesn't really suffer anyone. She's like an angry toddler on steroids playing croquet and chopping off heads. In the Alice in Wonderland 2010 release, Disney delved deeper into Lewis Carroll's story. Audiences were introduced to the Jabberwocky, but it's the Jub-Jub bird that gets the crown. The awful winged creature has a great thirst for its victims and has to be kept in isolation. Anything that's locked in a tower with a hood over its face isn't to be messed with in the slightest. The Queen of Hearts uses the birdie to fetch her enemies so she can turn them into new furniture. Isn't that sweet? While other birds are content with a little seed every now and then, the Jub-Jubs 
sups on souls. The queen calls upon the bird to keep her subjects in line when they dare to question her. During the big finale, the vulture gets crushed by a flaming boulder shot out by the army he's fighting for. That's poetic justice if I've ever heard it. The queen was miserable without her best weapon on hand, but that just serves her right, doesn't it? What do you think? Can you think of a monster more powerful than the ones I've mentioned? Sound off in the comments. Oh, before you go, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to keep up to date with The Binger. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.